So before we start our program, we are introduced our chairperson, Sir Kick Munnings. He lives in the Bishops, England, and having retired from a career in secondary teaching, he continues to work part time at a Buddhist healthcare ch chaplain in the University of Manchester Foundation and HS Trust and work with staff and patients using meditation. He has practiced Samatha meditation since 1973, teaching Samatha extensively in the UK and running retreat in Sri Lanka. So therefore, <coughs> so may I kindly and respectfully re request our venerable Sankha and participant to take this and be silent uh, to listen to today's program. So therefore, now may I so to start seeing it is time to start our program. So may I now hand over our, uh, the floor to our chair. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, welcome back to the panel, the, the last of the panel sessions, se session seven, a continuation on the theme of Abhidhamma and meditation. It is on, it is on, it is on, not, not near enough, okay. So welcome back to the, the last panel session, this one, a continuation of the previous one on the theme of Abhidhamma and meditation, or Abhidhamma meditation. So I'm very pleased to welcome Professor Kate Crosby to deliver the first of these sessions. I must say, for me personally, I've been trying to have a conversation with Kate about these matters for ever since I knew her and still haven't, so I had to travel all this way to come to this session, so I'm going to enjoy this. Um, Kate, as you know, is Professor of Buddhist Studies in the Department of Theology and Religious Studies at King's College in London, and she's previously held many, many, a good number of university posts and also visiting positions at Buddhist institutions all over the world. Kate. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm a bit short, so I'll stand. <laughs> um, thank you. I, my paper's a bit different, I think, from the other papers we've had because I suppose I'm um, looking at the history of meditation. Um, and I'm looking at a meditation that nowadays is called Boran Kamatan. In, it's called that in Thailand and Cambodia. I'll explain why shortly. Uh, a pre-modern meditation associated with Ayutthaya, the uh, ancient capital of Siam, uh, of Thailand. And my question, how does it work, is not a question I'm going to answer. That's what I've brought it here for, so that you can tell me. Um, before I look at the meditation itself, I just want to uh, quote from the commentary to the Patana. Um, so, but when coming to the great book, the Patana, he, the Buddha, began to contemplate the 24 universal causal relations of condition, and so on. His omniscience certainly found its opportunity therein. Rays of six colors, indigo, golden, red, white, tawny, and dazzling, issued from the teacher's body. And it carries on like this, the different colors that come from the body. They penetrated the water and caught the atmosphere. They sprang forth in the open space beyond, into the open space across to the infinite world systems. Even great Brahma, able to diffuse light throughout a billion world systems, became like a glowworm at sunrise. And the reason I've begun with this uh, quotation from the uh, Abhidhamma commentary is um, to remind us that it's uh, also about a physical transformation. And um, so the Buddha's enlightenment here is described in physical terms as well, the em emitting of light. And that came up earlier today in the previous sessions on meditation about um, light from the body. And I mention that because it's relevant to what we find in the Sri Lankan meditation manuals I want to be looking at today. So I'm going to be looking at 18th century Sri Lankan meditation manuscripts. And these manuscripts um, arose at a time when they were trying to revive Buddhism in Sri Lanka, very anxious about the decline of the sasana. And um, because we were talking about maths yesterday, I've put in a, 
<laughs> maths problem. Uh, so basically, they're worried, these practitioners of meditation are worried about whether it's still possible to become an arhat at this time when the sasana is so declined. And so they reassure themselves with a math mathematical calculation. And the calculation is here on, on the screen. And what it does is it says a single Buddha brings to liberation 24 asankhya, 60, 100,000 billion and 100,000 beings. I don't know what an asankhya is. It means incalculable, but uh, I looked up and Buddha Dutta says there are 141 ciphers in this figure. So this is how many people the Buddha brings to enlightenment. And not all of those, that number has been used up yet. So there's still opportunity at this time to gain enlightenment. Um, but in terms of the actual number, I'd really be grateful if the mathematicians could tell me what it is. And in terms of the source, because this is not the number given in the canon, I believe. So, so, in the, so where does this particular number come from? I'd be really interested to hear. Anyway, so at this time, when they were worried about Sasana decline, um, there was a revival in Sri Lanka led by the monk in the picture here. This is a wall painting from the period. Um, and Saranankara uh, was the monk who headed the revival. Um, why were they so anxious about um, the decline? Well, they'd had two centuries of colonialism by this time. So they'd had the Portuguese and the Dutch taking control of the coastal regions with both forcible and kind of economic conversion. Um, and so there was a big fear of uh, Sarsana decline. And um, so King Kitty Shri, um, he supported a reform re or a revival um, headed by Saranankara. And he also issued a royal edict that monks should pursue learning and meditation. And they sent ships um, with an embassy of um, monks and, and sort of, um, not royal monks, uh, so people who had taken the lower ordination. Um, to Ayutthaya in Siam to say, can you ask the king and the Sangharaja, the highest monk, if they could have some help reviving the Sangha? And the king at the time was uh, being, uh, King Boromkot, and he sent three missions of monks, and they arrived in 1753, 1756, and 1759. And the first mission established the Upasampada. So the Upasampada, the higher ordination, had uh, stopped in Sri Lanka. There was nobody who had this. They didn't have enough monks to create the lineage. So now, the, today, the oldest Nikaya in uh, Sri Lanka is the Siam Nikaya from this time. Um, the second mission is less known about because the text that came didn't... Um, weren't public, so there were a lot of texts came and they're in libraries, very famous libraries in Sri Lanka. But the second mission was about meditation as well. And as I'll explain in a moment, those meditation manuscripts weren't put into those royal libraries at the time. Okay, um, so just a bit about the name Buranka Matan. Old or ancient meditation is what it means. So Buran is the Khmer and Thai words for Purana uh, in Pali, ancient. And it gets called this in the 20th century, earliest 20, early 20th century, because at that point in the early 20th century, this type of meditation is replaced. It's replaced by new forms that come from Burma or that are developing among the forest monks. Um, you can still see hints of it, but it's so radically different that um, monk scholars at the time working on meditation history call this one Buran. This is the old one being replaced. Um, going back to that second embassy to, um, second mission to Sri Lanka from Ayutthaya in 1756, um, there are two particularly famous monks, Visuddhacharya and Varanyana, uh, both famous for their learning and their meditation, and they stayed for eight years. Uh, and 24 local Sinhalese monks studied meditation under Visuddhacharya. And for this purpose, um, the king sponsored the renovation of cave temples. And so throughout Sri Lanka, you find beautiful 18th century cave temples with these beautiful wall paintings. And um, basically sites were set up around Sri Lanka. So even though 
But is, uh, even though the coastal areas were under Dutch control at this time, it was still possible to set up, uh, to have an influence on the monastics in the Dutch area as well. So it's throughout the land. And we have manuscripts that, lots of the manuscripts have no information where they come from, but some of them are directly connected with these sites, the, especially the sites in the center. Okay. So these are the manuscripts from these um, monks were manuals. So, and they didn't tell us about the early stages of the practice. They only record the high level practice. And the reason I think they did this is because they knew their Siamese teachers would go back. Um, so the Siamese teachers were all high ranking monks who had important posts in Ayutthaya. And so they knew they were going to return. And so I think they recorded the things that were hardest to remember. Um, and, but after, not long after the mission, uh, the Burmese invaded and after the sack, sack of Ayutthaya, um, their connection was broken off between, um, between the revival in Kandy and um, Ayutthaya. So later reforms, this is the second bullet point on the screen here, the later reforms of meditation and monastic lineage in Sri Lanka were um, through connections either with monks in Burma or Arakan um, or through Mongkut, through King Mongkut, King Ram IV. Now, that's quite interesting because Mongkut famously rejected his teacher's meditation tradition. So he learned this system but he rejected it, saying it's not visible in the canon. And that was part of his rationale for starting the Tamayut, that he didn't accept the credentials of his teachers. Um, and so meditation, reform, revival meditation later on in Sri Lanka has a Burmese influence or a um, kind of revival, modernized Thai influence. So these manuscripts end up discarded, and as the monks who own them die, they go from being personal manual into the general um, libraries of the monasteries. And they end up being collected by the man in the photograph here, who was a Hugh Neville. He was a uh, civil servant in Sri Lanka, so a British civil servant, but it was a very bad civil servant because he liked Sri Lanka, he liked everything about Sri Lanka far too much. And so he didn't get promoted, but he did make some amazing collections of plants and that kind of thing, and sent them to Kew. And he also collected manuscripts, particularly interesting and old ones. And he didn't steal them or anything like that. He uh, negotiated to like, give new copies to, to the temple, a copy what they wanted, and they would give him things he hadn't had before quite often. And after his death, the British Library bought the collection. And so in the British Library, we have the largest collection of Sri Lankan manuscripts outside of Sri Lanka, over 2,000. And it includes some of these meditation manuals. And that's where I first started getting interested in these manuals. Now, one of the things that's difficult, difficult about looking at these uh, manuals is firstly, when you open a meditation manuscript, it might at first seem like any other meditation manuscript because the words used for different aspects of meditation are all the same yeah, across, you know, from Visuddhi Mugga to everything else. Uh, but so it's hard initially to see that something is different. The other thing about these manuscripts is they are encoded. So when the manu so one of these manuscripts was first published in Sri Lanka, they didn't understand the code and they kind of tidied up the Pali to make it look grammatical, but they just hadn't recognized that there's a code going on. And people who work on um, uh, like Parninian grammar or Kachina will recognize the type of code. Um, okay. So these manuscripts are there in London, but also the revivalist Anagarika Dharmapala brought a related manuscript to Rhys David, Davids, the founder of the Pali Tech Society in London. And um, so Rhys Davids edited it, and um, there's a translation, 
and this is what Keith had mentioned earlier. So um, at that time, they didn't really understand meditation in the West, and theosophy, which was a new movement trying to look at um, the truth underlying all religions, and which was very interested in Buddhism, was very influential also in how people understood um, meditation. So, and even Anagarika Dhammapala was heavily influenced by theosophy in his understanding of meditation as well. And they were, um, at that time, very interested in Tibetan Buddhism. So the editors had quite a difficult time understanding it, um, as mentioned, and they were doing it in a hurry. Uh, and they hoped that someone in the future would understand it. And then Woodward did the translation 20 years later, and he was actually in Sri Lanka at the time. But, and so he looked around for a practitioner and he found out that the last practitioner had died in 1900. So we missed a living tradition in Sri Lanka. Um, and what we find is that people who were looking at it since then, they kind of dismiss it. So Caroline Miss Davis, who had been talking about the dry bones of the yamaka, uh, she, um, she dismissed it. At that time, Buddhism in Ceylon, Buddhism in Sri Lanka, was so decadent that there could not have been much samadhi or jhana practice among monks. Extremely dismissive. And none of, these, none of the practitioners at the time that report back to the West are in a teaching uh, lineage. So none of them take instruction. We do get monks who do take instruction and stay in Asia, but nobody's passing back the knowledge directly from a teaching lineage, um, as far as I know. Uh, and the reform monk, Nyanarama, who was um, inspired by um, Burmese meditation, he, and by the Visuddhimagga, he looked at it, it is not a method of meditation. And then there's a quote at the bottom from a anthrop an anthropologist working in the 1980s saying, this system is an imaginative but not very insightful attempt to revive meditation from the text, for the text seem to have been treated as repositories of magical law. Okay, so we've got a meditation system that comes from the highest monks in Ayutthaya, so the highest Siamese monks, and it's, the tradition is lost in Sri Lanka, and the texts, when they're received, either by revivalists or by Western scholars, are dismissed. Yeah. So what's, what didn't they like? Well, uh, this is an image from a, a Sri Lankan manuscript, and I've just photographed the central part of the palm leaf there. And um, yeah, so these manuscripts have these diagrams that show you how to internalize the nimitta. So for you do the meditation, you develop some kind of visual or physical re response to the meditation question. And then in this tradition, you bring it into the body through the nasal down, certain energy centers into the body, uh, down to the, the na nabi, the navel. And, um, and so this image, um, this at the top says Sakadagami Magam, so the path of the once returner. So we re immediately recognize that we're in Abhidhamma. And it says Nabiyam at the navel. And then it's saying Anuloman in order. You're going to bring down the different uh, Apana um, and different, so different stages of meditation. You're bringing them down into the body and the navel. So you're looking. This is like if we're looking down from our head, looking down on the practice here. And so this seemed very strange, and actually the other, it only gets stranger because uh, this is an, a hand drawing but taken from the same manuscript. And this is the f um, metta, and it's being moved around the body on a plane into different positions. And then if you carry on, you start moving it even more dramatically. Yeah. Um, so basically the nimitta are brought down into the body and moved around and then in combination. So um, now I mentioned that the tradition had died out in Sri Lanka, um, but we do have living 
uh, heirs to it, so traditions that have come from these practices. So I'm just going to say a little bit about these. Um, so this is, this is um, on your right-hand side, is the medical manual of Sukhaitan. So Sukhaitan is the um, Sangharaja at the Tomburi in the beginning of the Bangkok period. So after the Sakha of Ayutthaya, he comes to Tonburi, uh, which was briefly the capital before Bangkok, and he uses this meditation practice not just for meditation but also to treat illness. So using the, the nimitta to clarify illness due to imbalance of dosa in Ayurveda, so imbalance um, in the body. And on the left, um, you've got a, I don't know if you can see in the back, um, there's a photograph of uh, a monk called Venbo Vera. He's now the head of the meditation section in Sukhaitan's old monastery, which is what Rajasitharam in Tomburi. And he, so he teaches it now, and he has this model made of movements of the Nimitta in the body. Uh, another lineage that is connected through Suk's tradition, um, well, through the Ayutthaya practice, but modernized in the early 20th century, ends up being taken up by the, and forming the Dhammakaya uh, movement and collection of temples, and they have created more accessible version using online video and images, and so the one on the left is from Dhammakaya showing positions in the body as you move the nimitta than the body, and on the right is a traditional um, Thai illustration that's being published as a book about these centers in the body where you place these nimitta. Um, the other place we have uh, remnants of living tradition is in Cambodia. These are my teachers in Cambodia, Acha Ol and Acha Yi. Acha Yi died last year, unfortunately. He was in his 90s, very, very brilliant um, practitioner. And um, the difficulty in Cambodia and also in Laos is that this practice thrived in the rural areas up until the 1970s, and then we have the Pol Pot period, and many of the practitioners are killed. Uh, so I think Achayu was one of the few teachers who had practice when the living tradition was still strong. So there are just a few temples teaching now, and it seems uh, to me a sort of, um, it's a, maybe a simplified tradition, but also tradition that follows um, Cambodian interests which are mainly connected with um, death and funerary rites in this practice. I can explain that another time or with questions. Anyway, uh, so what has this got to do with Abhidhamma? Um, in the Cambodian texts and re records of Cambodian practice before the Pol Pot period, we can see lots of Abhidhamma terminology. And if we turn to the Sri Lankan texts, because they were recording high-level practice that they were afraid of losing, we can uh, see that actually is very similar to the Visuddhimagga um, categorization of the path. So uh, it's very small, sorry. <laughs> um, so, the, so this is just the list of Samatha and Vipassana in the Visuddhimagga, which was mentioned earlier. So in the Samatha section, the 40. Um, Meditation subjects, we have the four to, or five jhana, and there's the emphasis on jhana attainment and concentration. While on the vipassana side, we have uh, different kinds of insight leading up to the insight of, that leads to liberation. So if I then take just the samatha section, um, oh, three minutes, oh no. <laughs> um, not according to my clock. <laughs> um, uh, we have on the left the 40 Kamatana, as we're familiar, but in, on the right-hand side, the Baran Kamatana system divides this up uh, into, uh, breaks it down into far more uh, layers, so we end up with 99 um, different levels. And the first of those is the PT, um, or pleasure, or joy, or delight, which is one of the uh, aspects of the first two jhana. Um, 
and also a Chetasika, of course. And it breaks these down into, so this gets broken down in the commentary period into five, from the initial PT to the fully pervading PT. And, um, and the, um, these get moved around the body, so you develop it. So from the living practice, we learn how to develop these. Um, and from the Sri Lankan text, we can see the detailed structure of the path as you bring in different Jetasaka into the body. And this is the image from, taken from um, what Traja Sitaram. Um, and there, the, you bring things down to the navel, first of all, and then back up to the heart. And then you do these different permutations of the order of them. So you're bringing in several things. Just a word about the two physical locations that are most important, the navel, uh, the center of the body, and the starting point for the breath, according to the Visuddhimagga, and the Hadayavatu, which is the physical basis for the mind element um, and um, for the Chetasaka. Um, so, and the next section goes back to what Keith was talking about before, so the um, different um, finer qualities of body and mind. Uh, so we've gone through the PT and then we're going to do these. And these are, again, Chetasika, but they're the antidotes to the akusala, various akusala states. Um, so what I think is going on here um, is the internalization of the Chitta and Chetasika. Um, I was interested by a discussion we had in the workshop about the Chetasika as Bahira, because they do get invited in. So the Akasa you mentioned is part of a, quite a long um, invocation. So an Aradana, as we'd say in Sri Lanka, so inviting them into the body. And so we end up with the various Kusala, Vipaka, and Kiriya Chitta, um, and their Chetasika broken down into a full progression from the Putujana to the Arhat, and they're incorporated into the body at the heart. This has interesting parallels with other technologies of the time, like medicine, but I won't go into that now. Um, and so it looks as if we're basically trying to, it's, and the prayer is that these come into my kanda, come into the body, and combine with the elements. And so it seems like we're creating chittaja rupa at the heart base. Um, at Wat Raja Sitaram, this method stops at the Samatha level. And I think that's because in the modern period, it seems more like a Samatha type practice. And so for them, it's like trying to gain control and flexibility of the mind, ready for Vipassana. And then the Vipassana switches to be more like a, a Burmese Vipassana system. But in the Sri Lankan um, method, it continues through to the Noa Lukutura Dhamma, so through to the four Magga. Magapala from stream entrant up to Arhat and um, Nibbana broken down into all the relevant Sobhana Chittasika. And so here we've got the Abhidhamma being used as a guide to transformation. And then, uh, and I just want to say, oh, it's probably a bit small, uh, but this influences art. So if you look at um, Ayutthaya manuscripts, they attempt, they do attempt to convey in art both the state of Nibbana and the state of being an Arahat. And this is um, um, Bas Tevil, who's an um, anthropologist and historian of Thai Buddhism, has been working on this. So this image is the image he got. Um, and so here you see the uh, monk who is labeled Arahat. He's holding the gem, um, the light, um, uh, at the center of his navel. And here's a more local image. This is a um, Lana image. And uh, it's now in the Los Angeles um, Museum of Art. And it says, um, and there's a gem at the center of the navel, which seems to represent this practice. And it says on it a phrase that recurs through the manuscripts as well Nibbana Pacho Hotume. May this be the cause of my Nibbana. Thank you, Kate. Thank you for... <clears throat> Thank you for a, a, a very informative, very interesting piece based on both research and practice. And um, 
with lots of implications, I think, for future practices and, and scholarship. Thank you. And we now move to um, Sayele Dorvupasanta from the International Theravada Buddhist Missionary University in Myanmar. Um, she has a, an impressive academic career with um, a degree in Pali scriptures, um, a master's in Buddhism at ITBM in 2009. She ta taught Abhidhamma to the nuns in the nunnery, in the nunnery from 1989 to 1998. And, um, the government conferred to her the honorary degree of uh, title in 2009. So she's going to talk under the title Overcoming the Adversities of Life Through Abhidhamma Meditation. Thank you. My most venerable sorrows, <clears throat> all Indonesian scholars, distinguished guests, all ladies and gentlemen, First of all, I would like to express my gratitude to my teacher, Raktu Siarod, and Ubinya Boga, Daudado Yuzananyani, Ubinya Boga, for Korea invitation and giving me a chance for presentation. The title of my presentation is Overcoming the adversities of life through Abhidhamma meditation. In our life, in one way or another, we have to encounter the vicissitudes of life. In facing the adversities of life, only an individual with the well trained mind can overcome the, that situation. That is why Abhidhamma meditation is essential for the modern people. So my presentation, the, ob the objective, the purpose of my presentation is to understand what Abhidhamma meditation is, to correlate the experience of insight, med insight meditation with Abhidhamma knowledge, to inspire us with intuition to put Abhidhamma knowledge into practice in effective way to overcome adversities of life through the practice of meditation, to develop insight knowledge step by step, to calm and purify the mind leading to a peaceful life and to the attainment of nirvana. Today, I would like to focus the practice of Vedama meditation in daily life Anapana meditation from Bhidhamma perspective, uh, especially in Patana Naya, the rule of Patana in uh, and contemplative thought process, the rule of the bowing are in inside meditation. Because the main theme of our conference is to unravel in the matrix uh, Bhidhamma meditation, Patana and uh, bowing are. Uh, that is why I would like to uh, focus on the, to solve these three things. Uh, now I would like to uh, explain what is Abhidhamma meditation in brief. Uh, Abhidhamma meditation is the way to train the mind by two methods, tranquility and insight meditation. Because Abhidhamma deals with the four ultimate realities and concepts as well. We already know that the object of uh, tranquility meditation is concept, whereas the object of insight meditation is the, <clears throat> the nature of physical and, uh, physical and mental phenomena, which is ultimate realities. <clears throat> and then these, the purpose of these two types of meditation are not the same. Uh, the purpose of uh, tranquility meditation is to calm down the mind in order to remove the defilements temporarily. That is why when we practice uh, tranquility meditation, we need to control our mind uh, to focus on the meditation object. The purpose of inside meditation is to penetrate the true nature of physical and mental phenomena 
as they really are, such as impermanent suffering and non-self. In order to remove the defilements momentarily and completely. In the two med meditation, uh, two, uh, two methods of meditation, our focus only on the inside meditation. Because uh, now also the this uh, kid classification or explain about the uh, Trangkalti meditation and my chairman also explained about the uh, Anapana meditation. So here I would like to focus only the inside meditation. Uh, in the inside meditation, there are two forms of inside meditation, formal and informal. Uh, formal inside meditation means be mindfully aware of the physical and mental phenomena in the sitting meditation at, at the prescribed, uh, specifically prescribed space. That means uh, this is regular practice. We sit, we sit and we, uh, we practice inside meditation is in sitting posture or we, we will go to the meditation center, we just pay attention only in the meditation object all the time as much as we can. This is formal meditation. Informal meditation means uh, being mindfully aware of the uh, physical and mental phenomena arising in the daily activities. That means we have to observe what is, what is happening in our mind the whole day as much as we can. That is called informal meditation. So formal meditation is also necessary, for the, especially for the beginner, because uh, meditation is a mind walk. Uh, in order to know the mind, to know the mind is not easy, because the nature of mind is very subtle, it is very difficult to know. And it wanders uh, here and there, whatever it desires. That is why for the beginner, formal meditation is necessary. <clears throat> and the, um, uh, the, in the form of meditation also, I would like to uh, spotlight the Anapana meditation. Uh, because Anapana meditation can be uh, used in both tranquility and insight meditation. But here, I will not uh, explain Anapana in tranquility meditation because of my chairman has already explained. So I will explain anapana meditation in the inside meditation and I will, um, I will explain how to analyze anapana meditation in a bit of my perspective. So what we call anapana in the ultimate sense. In, in, in the concept anapana means in and of bread. But in the ultimate sense, what is, what is anapana? What is in and of bread? What is the cause of the in and of bread? According to the Vibhinga uh, Atakata, uh, anapana in and of bread is a mind bone matter. It is caused by mind. The mind, you know, each and according to the Abhidhamma, each and every consciousness, excluding the revered consciousness and two sets of five sense of consciousness and four sublime resultant consciousness, generate the mindful matter at arising moment, excluding at sasa and pasasa, in and outbreed. In the ultimate sense, in and outbreed is the air element, special quality of the air element. So in the ultimate sense, it's only just air element. It is devoid of the self. It's not living being. This in our life, this asasa, pasasa, uh, air element uh, arise, occurs in our life. The less asasa, pasasa, or a element in an ivory occurs along with the sixteen consciousness uh, preceding the dead consciousness. So this asasa pasasa a element sits together with the dead consciousness. That is why we can be assumed that 
This asasa pasasa always exists with us from the Bhima standpoint. Later, after, after the, our session, you can discuss whether this asasa pasasa element always with us, with us or not, according to the Abhidhamma, according to the Visodhi Mega. And then, in the ultimate sense, this asasa pasasa a element cannot arise singly. It arises together with the four other elements, uh, art elements, and there were the elements, five elements. In this asasa pasasa a, a element, there is a color, smell, and then taste and nutriment also. That is why there are eight inseparable matters. But since this asasa pasasa is caused by mind, when we intentionally breathe deeply, sound also came out. That is why there are nine measures in the asasa pasasa. Now, I would like to analyze the asasa pasasa element and then from, uh, from according to the patana. But when we practice in anapana uh, in the inside meditation, at the beginning we have to aware of the uh, sensation in the nose tree or at the, tip, uh, at the upper leaf. We have to be aware of the uh, the element. But we do our air element alone is not enough. We have to observe four elements. Heat or cold or uh, hardness or softness element. So in this, uh, now I would like to uh, explain how to apply the uh, patana cause a relation method in anapana, in breed and outbreed. So the in breed and outbreed, a element caused by mind. That is why mind and mental factors are related to the uh, a element called asasa pasasa by way of 14 conditions. Please look at the PowerPoint. I will not explain all. Uh, we have, uh, the time is very limited. Among 14 conditions, I will explain some points giving an example. For example, alava dosa, alava adosa, amoha are related to the asasa pasasa, an element or an inseparable material by viral root condition. Sometimes you see uh, we are uh, suffocating due to the stress, right? And in this case, stress is related to the our breathing, breathe out, by viral root condition. From a practice, vipassana meditation or tranquility meditation, there is a jhana factors, right? Vitaka, vichara, piti, sukha, ekagara. These jhana factors are also related to the, this in and out rebari of jhana. When we practice inside meditation, constituent factors, samadhi, samasangapa, samawema, samasati, samasamari, are also related to the element. <coughs> The rest, please study, please read by yourself. That is why uh, the uh, mental, mental states are causally related to the asasa, pasasa, chichasa, rupa uh, by 14 different conditions. Now, uh, I would like to uh, present the, how the contemplative thought, uh, thought process arising in us when you are practicing Vipassana meditation. When you are practicing Vipassana meditation, when we are aware of the uh, <clears throat> breathe in or breathe out, or rising and falling, or uh, physical sensation, what type of total process arise in you initially? When you are practicing, you are aware of you touching, or aware, aware of the sensation here, among the six dough process, initially what type of dough process arise in you? Right? Body dough process, very good. Body dough process arise in us, right? Initially body dough thought process arise. So <clears throat> when the tangible objects came into the avenue of the 
Borido at the time. So Boeing are just one divisible, sorry, uh, distantable, or it has to pass one mile moment. That is called Boeing. After that, Boeing vibrate for two mile moments. Because it, Boeing Zeta cannot take the new object. That is why it vibrates for two moments after the STs. After that, five sensor averting consciousness arise taking the attending the minds toward, toward the object. After the receiving consciousness arise taking the receiving object, object uh, uh, receiving the tangible object. I will not explain in detail because this morning many uh, many CRG or they already explain right in detail. Now here I will explain even in this very thought process how many conditions, how many cause and effect. All right, natural cause and effect are together according to the pattern. Uh, please, uh, please look at the um, PowerPoint, this one. This one oh, is okay, the, the process. In the, even in one body door process, there are many causes and conditions. You know, the body, they just participate in body door thought process state the present tangible object, which is ultimate realities. In this case, the object, the object is related to the traders participate in the Borido thought process by four ways. Aramana object, Purijada, Prenisant, Ati, present, Avigata, so Ati, present, and Avigata, uh, <coughs> No disappearance. Because this, it, this uh, tangible object uh, arises before the thought process, it still exists. That is why there are four conditions. In the void thought process, preceding changes are related to the succeeding changes by way of Anandara, Samanandara, Anandrupa, Nisaya, Nati, Vigeta. Because Fama, the precinct, the cessation of the precinct data gave the chance for the cessation data to arise. That is why precinct data is a condition for the cessation data to arise. But we all proximity, continuity, and then uh, proximity to that decisive support and absent and disappearance. At the stage of Javana, precinct Javana are the condition for the succession Javanas by way of repetition condition. We have to add we have to add the repetition condition. That is why there are six way. A body base is a condition for the body consciousness by way of support, uh, prenaissance, faculty, and dissociation, way build up, and then at the Avigata. Heart base. Heart base also is a condition for the other traders to arise by way of Nisaya, Purijada, Vibhyoda, Ati, Avigata. So please, please look at the, the first, the Borido thought process. In this Borido thought process, all are the natural causes and natural effects. There is, there is no I-ness and no self. They arise the data arise to avoid the thought process. They arise one after another according to the lawful aura of changes. All that, what this body do thought process occur as a dhamma gaja, the function of the dhamma. In this body do thought process, there is no I, there is no individual effort, individ, individual function, only the Dhamma function, Dhamma Kaja. Uh, I would like to uh, explain a very interesting point according to the Abhidhamma. This body door, the Javana Jaitas arising at the body door process or five sense door process, cannot see the characteristic of the object. It just takes the uh, object. They cannot see the characteristic objects such, such as uh, the individual, uh, such as uh, the 
uh, individual characteristic or universal char characteristic. At, at the arising, the arising of the Borido thought process, Jaita participate in Borido thought process, especially in the Javana Jaitas, they cannot change, they cannot see the characteristic object. Later I'll explain you, 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 are more, you are know more. So after the Borido thought process, following mind thought process arrives. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So this Borido, the, the first Borido thought process stays the past object, which is, which is present, which is a past object, ultimate reality, and second mind thought process stays as a whole, even though as, the, as it takes a whole, and it's ultimate realities. So the rest five thought processes take the concept. So that is why the practice, tranquility, meditation, all these thought processes arise in us. The mind, our mind, change into the concept. That is why when you practice inside meditation, to get in touch with the ultimate reality directly, we, the most effective way is to Pay attention directly to the physical and mental phenomena without labeling. If we label or name, so our mind change into the concept. When we change the, our mind change the concept, we will not see the ultimate reality. That is why the most effective way is to pay attention or be directly mindfully attention to the uh, physical, mental, physical and mental phenomena. Now I, have, I would like to explain about the Boeing Ajayja. Why the, how the Boeing Ajayja arise during the meditation. That way I hope all of you are meditators. Uh, you, may, you may feel experience the Boeing Ajayja. So during the process, during the meditation, if awareness is, uh, all Sarah Siaji already explained about the Boeing, right? Uh, I will explain about the Boeing in brief. Boeing Chaita is in indispensable conditions of the life. Boeing Chaita is a resultant consciousness, and it is a buffer so arise between the thought process. The arising of the Boeinga Chaita is most obvious when we are in deep sleep. So now I would like to highlight how the Boeinga Chaita arise during the meditation. During the meditation, if awareness is very sharp, the length of Boeinga Chaita is short. Maybe two or three, three mind moments. If awareness is weak, the object is very obscure, Boeing Ajayita will take, uh, take uh, for a while. So, here there is a question. Why the meditator can contemplate the Boeing Ajayita as meditation object or not? When mindfulness and concentration is weak, it is impossible to <laughs> to know and to contemplate the Boeing Ajayita. However, when the mindfulness and concentration became very powerful, it is possible to contemplate it. So if you want to know more about the Boeing Ajayita, this morning also Ciara uh, told you to practice Vipassana meditation more. So sometimes, <clears throat> when the meditators see the arising and Passing away of the physical and mental phenomena, the mind became concentrated, the mind very calm and peaceful. After for a while, there is a, there, there is a gap. A few, there is a few seeds of the Boeing. At the, at the tender insight, that means at the Teruna Vipassana, sometimes many meditators may think that experience that, that gap is the main thing that is enlightenment because due to the uh, disappearance of the physical and mental phenomena. Actually, this is not real enlightenment. This is only a series of the Boeing Ajayita arise. If meditator mind 
if, may, if meditator mindfulness and concentration is very strong in them, as soon as meditator know, there is a gap, a, a few series of the Bohenga. So knowing mind knows that there is a gap. And then knowing mind knows the gap is drop, divide of the self. That stage is uh, not easy to observe it. It depends on the meditators, mind powers of the mindfulness, concentration, and wisdom. Wisdom means here seeing the arising and passing away of the physical and mental phenomena. So here, I would like to explain the differences between the gap we call the uh, Bawenga and real enlightenment. Continue. Sorry, time is over. Hmm? I have to continue. Oh, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. I will stop, right? So, and then. Thank you for a, a fascinating and informative talk, and yeah, yeah. A, and a very detailed and clear explanation. I'm sorry that about the time, but yeah, there'll yeah, be yeah. opportunities, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, sure, yeah. to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, two very different talks, approached in very different ways, but very much about the same matter. So, can we have some questions for either or both speakers? Over there. We, do you want a microphone? We have a microphone. Um, dear Venerable Sangha, uh, dear devotees, uh, my name is uh, Venerable Pasadika. I'm from Sri Lanka. As the only Sri Lankan in the audience, I decide to introduce three comments about uh, Dr. Uh, Kate's explanation, actually. It was really uh, wonderful, and I also got a lot of information from your presentation. And uh, the first picture that appeared in the presentation is uh, not from the the period of uh, Mahasanga Raja. It is actually 1925. Solius Mendes, the one who drew that. So he, he, that is the information shows in Wikipedia. Uh, this one I took from an 18th century, uh, 18th century manuscript. Uh -huh. And are the drawings afterwards? Do we mean the, the first, first drawing, first ever drawing of uh, Sangha Raja, the king of her? Oh, sorry, yes. Yeah. yes. That one is actually yes, from 1925, Solis Mendes. Actually, Thais tend to think it's a, the image of uh, Baranyana yeah, as well. Yeah, correct. They label that on Wikipedia, I think. Yeah, and the, the, there's, there's a huge debate about this, uh, this picture. Solis Mendes uh, drew this. Uh, originally, Sangaraja's color was a little bit dark. He <laughs> drew him in a fair way, so <laughs> some monks are not happy about it. And, and the other, uh, other one about Asankheya, uh, there are two books explaining Asankheya, the number Asankheya. One is Singhala Bodhivansa, the other book is uh, Pujavaliya Bodhisambhara section. Uh, according to that, uh, there is a system of calculating to Asankheya from 10, uh, which is really complicated. Uh, start from uh, 10 and then uh, they calculate up to 1 and 140 zeros. So it's like a multiplication, a small uh, way of doing it. It, uh, it comes in uh, uh, Puja uh, yeah, the first chapter, Bodhisambhara Puja Kata. So they explain 10 multiplied by 10 is 100, 100 by 10 is 1,000. That, like that, 1,000 by 100 is 100,000. In the same order, they uh, calculate it up to Asankheya, which is 1 and 140 zeros. According to Singhala Bodhivansa, Asankheya is 1 and 133 zeros. So there are two different explanations about Asankheya. Uh, can you tell me the sources again? Uh, which one? The, both sources. Okay, one is uh, Puja Valiya, yes, um, Bodhisambhara uh, Puja Kata. That is actually a one chapter of that. And the other one is uh, Singhala Bodhivamsa. Yeah. So they explain this particular calculation system found by King Nah uh, Nahuta, who who was in long, long time before. 
according to the Singhala Bodhi Vansha, he, uh, he ruled the country when the Kakusanda Buddha was there. So the period, uh, in the, during the period of Kakusanda Buddha. Anyway, there's a, there's a, uh, there's a, a script available in, in Anuradhapura era explaining about this particular king. His name is there. So uh, still people are researching about this matter. Especially, uh, you can meet uh, Mr. Hasita Chamigara from Caledonia University, uh, uh, the History Education Center. Uh, he's interested about this kind of thing, so he's publishing a lot of articles regarding this matter. And do you think the, and do you think the calculation itself come of the number of people that the Buddha enlightens comes no, from no, that? No, no, no. Only about the asankhaya. asankhaya. Yeah. Just, just what it, because I, I'm actually providing the answer to your question. What is asankhaya? That's it. The people one is a, it's a controversial matter because some monks, there's a huge debate about everywhere about this matter. I'm not going to comment about it. <laughs> Be careful about that, man. And number three, this is the last one. I, will, I won't take long. Uh, according to uh, one, uh, one monk, uh, Venerable uh, Jnana Prabha, uh, from 1950, he mentioned in a news, news, newspaper article that one relic hunter found two books called Madhuratta Manjusa, which is a Sinhalese a meditation manual about Satipatthana Sutta. And there's another book uh, called Magga Kovid Vannana. Uh, <laughs> the, the relic hunter found this, and I don't know what happened to these books afterward. I asked about this uh, manuscript from many scholars, but no one knows what happened to these things, but it's available in a small article written by this, this venerable. Sorry, Madhuratha Manjusha, what was the second one? Magga Kovid Vannana. So I, uh, I'm looking for these books for 14 years now. Still, I have never seen them in my eyes. I just I the names. I think, I can't be sure, but I think the Madhurata Manchasam may be in the Neville collection. There may be a copy mm -hmm, there. Mm -hmm. uh, so but then there's a lovely catalogue by Somadasa. So if it's there, it's easy to find. Okay, I will, I will look for it. But according to this uh, uh, explanation, Madhurata Manchasam is a, a meditational manual uh, developed by a monk in Dambadenya era, Sri Lanka. Uh, which is around uh, 14th century, 13th to 14th century. So then uh, that is the, uh, the history of meditation, Sri Lankan history of uh, meditation techniques uh, about Satipatthana Sutta. And the Madurat, Madurat, uh, Madur, uh, Magakovida Vannana, they explain, is a little bit uh, similar to Hatta Vanagalla Viharavansa, which is Achagiriya temple, uh, also in the Dabadaniya era. So those are the the only ancient books so called available, but no one have uh, seen those books so far. Uh, if I ever seen, I will, I will uh, try to publish that in the future. And in the present day, uh, regarding Abhidhamma, uh, there are two different books pr produced, uh, written by uh, Venerable Aryadhamma Mahathera. One is Abhidhamma Meditation, and the other one is Yamakappakarana, Yamaka Vachana Magga, written by uh, Venerable Ar Navin Aryadhamma Mahathera recently, based on uh, uh, Atakata and Tika. And also uh, Sattanupassana meditation method by Venerable Matara Jnanarama Mahatharu, which is actually quite popular book in Sri Lanka according to, uh, regarding Sri Lankan meditation techniques. Thank you very much. Thank you for all that very uh, useful yes. information. Thank yeah. you. May I make a comment? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that useful information. Just in terms of missing uh, meditation manuals that have uh, cropped up, um, the 12th century uh, scholar monk Sariputta, the head of Parakram Vahu's reform, uh, he had written um, a Kamatana Sangaha, and this was thought lost, but I found a copy in um, Panadura, um, and I've made a copy of that. So uh, the, that meditation manual is now available, which will give us some indication of what the 12th century reform did about meditation. And one of the things I'd like to say about that is that uh, we think of the 19th century reform as being the one where meditation was emphasized, but actually meditation seems to have been emphasized at previous um, councils and reforms as well. It's just that the um, evidence is not as visible. Yeah, thank you. Thanks very much for your, all your information. Thank you. Any other questions from anywhere? Um, the gentleman. <coughs> so, firstly, I would like to pay my respect to the Vanuva, Prakta Sierra, and the members of the 
Artiras. So both speakers have presented a very wonderful and very informative presentations they have made. My comment is to the CLA. When CLA may uh, maybe categorize that meditation into formal and informal, they are correct in the maybe daily sense, in the common sense. But scripturally speaking, both are formal because the informal method when CLA is begin, in which you have to be the meditator, have to be mindful of everything. And every activity is actually some jana pava or some nya pava, it, which was uh, maybe expounded in the Kadakati Vata and Kanupasana Sripatana. So both methods are formal methods for meditation. So thank you very thank much. You, thank you, CIE. <laughs> Um, thank you very much, both of you, for, for wonderful talks. So I have questions for both of you. And uh, one is to addressed to Kate to ask her, she mentioned very briefly Vipassana methods might have been different before the 19th century. So I'd like to ask her about that. And to you, Venerable Sister, I'd like to ask you how important Samatha is to your system. Thank you. How important? Um, thank you. Uh, yes, yeah, so um, it's difficult to work out looking at these manuals because we've only got what you do once you've achieved the specific insight in question. But then it seems to be that this is um, in some way embodied into the body. And that for me seems to fit with common, a certainly commentarial period understanding of Vipassana. Um, I also think that there, this emphasis on meditation of mind science came about in the 19th century century in response to colonialism. And this is to do with the capitulation, you might say, of the physical realm, so of weapons and medicine to colonial powers. And so, so the Lady Sayadaw's um, work categorizing different kinds of vidya is really interesting from that perspective because Vipassana becomes the highest and the others are there, but the, the other types of knowledge and transformative knowledge are there, but lower down. So I think there's something interesting going on to do with desomatization of meditation practice. That's what I would say. And I think the somatic practices are there, but they kind of disappear from plain view. Yeah. Um, and I'd be really interested to hear more from people who know more about this than I do. Thank you. Yeah. How do some of the meditations important? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how the samatha meditation is important? Yeah. A samatha meditation also important. A samatha meditation is a guardian. We call the Stura uh, Rekha. The samatha meditation also important for the meditation. Uh, we have to contemplate the values of the Buddha uh, to get our faith. So we have to reflect and do. Uh, to get the concentration, and we have to contemplate the values of the Buddha. We have to create the loving kindness for the all living beings, and then we have to reflect about the dead also, not to attach to our body and not to attach to other us as well. And then, and the Mita 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 Bhavana, Buddha Nusari, Asupa Bhavana. We have to reflect about the two parts of the body also. We, we, that is why the uh, Samatha meditation is also important. And the Anapana meditation, as a tranquility meditation, is also important. Because me, uh, for the beginner, to observe the mind and material directly is not easy. Because the natural mind is so scattered. That is why at the beginning, meditators uh, need to contemplate the Samatha meditation first. After meditation, yes. A question over here. Please. Yes. 
I'm very respectful when we were Sangha member, uh, our Rector Sierra. And no question, just uh, I get some information, Professor Case, or otherwise, I'd like to show you the way to enlightenment. I think, yeah. Just now, the Sri Lanka Venerable has given some information. Actually, if you want to know about the Asankhya, even myself, Asankhya is a countless. But we say for Asankhya, for countless, how we can count it for? Uh, our Ratasyaro, and the Ratasyaro, and the VIU also give this information. But uh, you can read Bhutta Wan Sapali and commentary, and Sri Yapitaka and commentary, but and then not so well, you were not so clear. But um, okay, let me explain a little bit more. We use Asinkhya in four cases: Kanana Asinkhya, uh, Anumana Asinkhya, Kaba Asinkhya, Bhutta Asinkhya. Kanana Asinkhya is that one followed by 114. In this count, you can read Abhidhana Pripika, uh, Anumana Asinkhya, and Kava Asinkhya, you can read Akenya Sota, and Bodha Asinkhya, and you have to read 24, not 28 Bodha. We count the Asinkhya, okay, suppose, from Deepingara Bodha, to Gondanya Bodha, among these two Bodha, Manikabas, Abhiya, and Despiya. Takaba, no Bodha, Abhiya. We call it Sonyakaba. So that's, we cannot count how many Sonyakaba, Abhiya, and Despiya. Abhiya, and Despiya. Then, after Divingara, Kondanya Bodha, Abhiya. In that period, there is one Asankhya. And then, you, you know, no? Sarakava, Mandakava, Warakava, Saramandakava, Patakava, right? Uh, okay, if you want to clear, I can get some information after that. So we count for us in Kia is between the two Bodha. So between the Kappa where Bodha Abhiya and after that, Mani kaba apiya and despiya, no boda apiya, thonya kaba, huh? one boda apiya. In that spriya, from the Deepingara boda to Vipasila, the last boda, our bodhisattva, Fufe Pafashin, so he faced four times that we cannot count how many kaba apiya and despiya. And some period we can stay calm. Sabo from Sumana Bodha to okay, Mengala Bodha, we can stay on 100,000 Kaba Apiya and Despiya, and from some Bodha to some Bodha, 13,000 Bodha Kaba Apiya and Despiya, and so on. And then you guess my. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. One time for one more question, please. Oh, right? For me, just a short comment. Uh, I, or you, or you There'll be some time shortly for more general questions. So these are really questions specifically for the two speakers. Yes, thank you very much, Dr. Kate Crosby, for bringing to light the history of the meditation in Cambodia. So my question is that how many living traditions are there in Cambodia right now? And uh, what is the main text that they are based? And another question to Dr. Basanda, I think this is important for all, but she was about to finish. The main, uh, the gap between Bawenga and Mega, and can you summarize some few points to, to, to you both? Thank you very much. My sister asked, the differences between Pawinga and Mega. Yes, <laughs> the, the gap that you're about to conclude uh, yeah, when you yeah, have yes. to stop. Yeah, yes. So we already know that Pawinga Jaydus 
the life continuing consciousness is indispensable of the life. So the, when is, uh, the, we have to know the object of the Boeing Ajaitas. The object of the Boeing Ajaita is Kamar or Kamani Meda, sign of the Kamar or Garini Meda, or Garini Meda destiny. Taken by the dying, taken by the thought process, approaching to the dead in the past existence. That is why the object of the Boeing Ajaita is a fix, Kamar or Kamani Meda or Garini Meda. So that is why the Boeing Ajaita cannot take the new object. <clears throat> and then another thing is the Boeing Ajaitas, the nature of Boeing Ajaitas in active consciousness. So Boeing Ajaita is pure. Why it is pure? Because when the Boeing Ajaita arrives, there is no more lower dosa moha. So we also, the Boeing Ajaita arrives between the thought process. When we are deep sleep, there is a Boeing Ajaita thought process. When all the Great wholesome and resultant consciousness with the two rules, or maybe three rules, Alava, Adosa, or Alava, Adosa, Amoha. In this Boeing Ajaita, there is no more defined, so the, no more defined That is why Boeing Ajaita is, the nature of Boeing Ajaita is pure, calm, and stable. No associate with the defilements. That is why Buddha preached the Babasara, Babasara Midan, Bikawi, Chaitam, Tenchako, Aganuke, Upaki, Lesei, Upaki, Lesei. The Boeinga Jaita are defined due to the defilements. Boeinga Jaita is free from the defilement, Buddha's pre Buddha preach. And then this Boeinga Jaita has no ability to take the, uh, no ability to eradicate the defilements. But Mega Jaita, Mega Jaita is the active, supermaning, wholesome consciousness. So Mega Jaita's Take the nirvana absolutely peace as object. So nirvana means actually, I want you to you will understand more. Nirvana means totally cessation of the physical and mental phenomena. Totally cease. So mega data has a powerful ability to completely eradicate the defilements. Mega data can take the nirvana as object, absolutely peace. That is why when the meditator attain the enlightenment mega, fall into the mega jaitas, the mind is absolutely peace. Arising, uh, taking the nirvana as object, it has the full, it has the power to totally eradicate it, some level of the defilement step by step, for the full stage of enlightenment. So that is why the Boeing Ajaitas and the real enlightenment are quite different. But sometimes, many data want to contemplate on the, uh, the physical and mental phenomena unseen arising and disappear. At the arising and disappear is very fast, very fast. Later on, the mind is so concentrated, there is a gap due to the disappearance of the object. That is why sometimes they may think that, oh, there is no more. No, no more object. My also can I stay quiet yet. So, uh, I will introduce a one book, the, a map of the journey written by the Sarah Uzotika. If you want to know more, please read this book. Sarah explained how the Boeing Ajayja arise during the meditation process, uh, according to the, his experience, and how the, this Boeing Ajayja, how to contemplate uh, the, when the meditator uh, reaching on the upeka, upeka, it's in karupeka nyana, below one new person. That is why Bohenga Jaita is real enlightenment, quite different. So if you want to know more, please practice inside meditation. You will understand clearly. My teach meditation master, uh, Shio Mesaraji, told me, if you clearly understand the true insight, there is no more question. So please, if you want to know, please practice. <laughs> For me, I didn't attain it. Yes, thank Perfect you. Perfect cue for finishing the session. Thank you. Um, thank you both for raising some very interesting questions that I don't think we've necessarily fully answered. And can we thank the two speakers? Sadhu. 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 Okay, thank you for so, Mr. Mr. Kip Manning for chair this
section and then, and then you to speak uh, as well. So now without taking much time, may I proceed to the next program. Is it to present a certificate to a speaker? May I request Sir Kit Manning to present a certificate to a speaker? Sadu, sadu, sadu. Sadu, sadu, sadu. <laughs> okay. So may I request you? I may request a uh, chairperson and then uh, the speaker to remain uh, on the stick because we have another person to give it to scholar or scholar. Please remain on the stick. Now, may I uh, invite the Madam Donang Sui Mung, the wife of the former pres vice president of Myanmar, to present the gift to all the scholars who in this participate in this conference. Uh, may I invite all scholar speaker to come to come to stake to receive the the gift from our Madam. When I'm Madam Donang Sui Mung, the wife of former vice president of Myanmar, and she had been supporting SFU since the beginning. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Can you give a wait? Sadu, sadu, sadu. Sadu, sadu, sadu. Thank <laughs> you. 
Okay, thank you, Madam Dunang Simung, for presenting this gift to our scholar in this conference. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. And also we will continue the next round discussion session. So I invite all the speakers to come in front and to be on the stage again. Yeah, all the speakers. Yeah, all the speakers. We will have round so discussion. May I invite, uh, so our staff may we prefer the chair. Yeah. On the stage. And yeah, we, we ask uh, our volunteer to bring in the chair. Yes. And it, we, we will have a round discussion and question from the audience. Who is this in a row? The Satan's in the Along Bianbiro Subon Swinway Jamebono, and not be the Prita Tema, Mamiansia, Silos in Mehun Silos in the Melo Yabare, Pilos in the Sakola, Pingas in the Ascension Lebet to Roa Chinchin Mera, a Swinway at the Lopa Meno, at the Assistant. We will. Have, we will have a break after this uh, round discussion session. This round discussion session will be chaired by Dr. B. Fio Jo, San State Buddhist University. เดี๋ยวมาอุบโอกันเกี่ยวเลยอันอ่าต่างรัฐเนี่ยกันมาเจอไหนเดี๋ยวมีข้อถามกันก็ถามแม้เดี๋ยวขึ้นอ่าปัน
because I'm come, coming here and attending here and listening, paying attention to everybody. So I may be a T H. <laughs> uh, uh, but not every T H should not be happy because Azadatta and Diwada are T H. So they can, uh, they, they have so many Ajipara. So what should myself be driven uh, to have Vipassana Jnana and then Mega Phala Jnana and to see Neva also. What will be the driving factor for me particularly? So will you kindly advise me to extend my meditation? Thank you. <laughs> so, Ajit, you, uh, first, can, uh, can I ask you, you know, first, can you identify yourself? We know but there are new people. First, can you, can you kind of identify yourself? And secondly, can you address your question to specific speakers? Okay. <laughs> I'm Dr. Ji Mao of Bengla Buha. Yesterday, I'm so much excited that uh, I cannot mention where I come from. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, I got sudden momentary blindness uh, today. Uh, I get my consciousness, I recapture it. And I am Dr. Jimo, uh, a teaching staff at Mengalabhiwa Association in Yango. <laughs> so, um, uh, I'm not addressing to a particular person. Uh, anyone can give me answer. <laughs> As you like. So I think okay. that I have to vote. Abba Martin, not somebody ta in it. Abba Martin, not somebody ta. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes. So I would like to. Dr. Timon. Yes, I'm going to share with what you want to know from practical sense. Whether you are three rooted or two rooted, you cannot make your you cannot make decision by yourself. Even meditation teachers cannot make any decision exactly by seeing you, your worldly position, your knowledges. But generally speaking, if you are the one who can solve the problem, what you have never learned in your life, on the spot immediately, you can understand that you are a three-rooted person. Even the Specialists, they may be two-rooted person. If they are book one, they know just from their books. If something serious thing happen, they cannot solve the problem because they have never learned in their life. Those who are three-rooted person, they are very reasonable. They can give answer on the spot without much difficulty even though they have never learned before. Because they can communicate, they can con relate what, we, what he had experienced in his life. This is from the one perspective. I am share with the perspective of meditation. So I am teaching all, almost all the 40 kinds of meditation object, as I have shared with all of you. 30 leads of absorption concentration. All 30 I'm teaching. So under my guidance, those who have already practiced 30 kinds of meditation object which leads to absorption concentration. And also 10 kinds of excess concentration. 10 kinds of meditation object which, which leads to absorption, uh, excess concentration. So if you practically practice the teachings of the Buddha, what are the 
training of more training of concentration. Suppose if you practice anapana meditation diligently, spending enough time, and if you see the light, if you could focus on the inhaling and exhaling continuously for a long time, but this is also gradual training. So if you practice spending enough time, you will be able to develop a one-pointed mind on one object. If you can do for one hour, one and a half hours, you will develop concentration at that time. Concentrated mind produces light. So at the beginning, the light appears somewhere in front of you, in front of your face, a little bit far distance from your nostril. At that time, you should keep focusing just on the breath as usual. And if you do so, at the beginning, the light appears and disappears. It appears just for a moment. At that time, the light will attract your mind. You will be interested on the light. You will pay attention on the light. And if you, if you pay attention on the light, as the light is unstable, it disappears. You should not focus on the light. You should focus on the breath as usual. If you can do so, finally, concentration improves more. And the light becomes stable. It appears continuously without disappearing. And gradually it will come close to your nostril. Finally, it will unify with the brain. So when the unification starts, it is unstable. At that time, you should keep focusing just on the breath as usual. When the unification lasts for 30 minutes, the light becomes stable. At that time, you can focus on the light. If you focus on the light, and if you can do for long time, for a long time, such as one hour, one and a half hour, two hours, you attain first jhana at that time. You know that at that time, you are three-rooted person. You will be the one who can attain absorption, concentration in this life, and you will be the one who can attain path and fruition knowledge if you continuously practice spending enough time and effort. This is a practical way you can distinguish who you are. Sorry, uh, I can maybe Bante first then. You can, you can, you can. Yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, unfortunately, our question sessions after the presentation is short, so there was no time. I wanted to ask Sally. In your presentation, you mentioned about 16 mind moments, last breath occurring before death consciousness. So before I have heard similar, well, I was studying Sankara Yamaka with one Saido, Myanmar Saido, and he was repeatedly saying like, the last breath occurs 33 mind moments before, before death consciousness. I was trying to find whatever, I was looking really for source where he takes it from, I couldn't find. So maybe you know the source where this information comes from. Oh, okay. We you will see that uh, Anapana meditation, the Jarima, Jarima Anapana, you will see the commentary, we saw the commentary, the last breathing, you will see. Yeah, yeah. Anapana Babakata, the Samatha meditation, mentioned in the We saw the Mega Thank you. Okay, um, with your people, the department, uh, the municipal department of uh, San State Buddhist University. My symbol is very simple. My question is true to Kate. Uh, you say Samatha and Yoga Sala. Samatha is the party um, to practice and uh, to concentrate mind. But I don't understand the term of yoga sala to practice. It is not uh, clear in my mind. I wonder if you can explain uh, the differences between them. 
ยกาสลาแองสมถะเขาถูกประทิตเอยกาสลาแองสมถะยกาสลาแองสมถะเขาถูกประทิตอิทิตที่เปลี่ยนความอิจฉาอ๋อบัตเดิฟเดอะรีสันอิทบิคัมส์อัสโซเชเอตด์วิดดิสปาร์ติคิลาร์ทรดิชันซึ่งวิดคีธและเคทวิดทูคิงอิทบัตเดิฟเดอะรีสันอิทบิคัมส์อัสโซเชเอตด์วิดดิสปาร์ติคิลาร์ทรดิชันซึ่งวิดคีธและเคทวิดทูคิงอิทบัตเดิฟเดอะรีสันอิทบิคัมส์อัสโซเชเอตด์วิดดิสปาร์ติคิลาร์ทรดิชันซึ่งวิดคีธและเคทวิดทูคิงอิทบัตเดิฟเดอะรีสันอิทบิคัมส์อัสโซเชเอตด์วิดดิสปาร์ติคิลาร์ทรดิชันซึ่งวิดคีธและเคทวิดทูคิงอิทบัตเดิฟเดอะรีสันอิทบิคัมส์อัสโซเชเอตด์วิดดิสปาร์ติUh, differentiate this meditation from any other, but because it keeps saying throughout the text, Yoga Vatra Bikuna, you know, this must be done by the Yoga Vatra Bikuna. He, that's why he called it Yoga Vatra's manual. So it just means a meditator, but it's a, a term that occurs a lot in these particular manuals when it's giving the instructions. So it occurs thousands of times. By, by the way, you know, you have translated uh, one text on Yoga Chara. Is y o k a v a c h a r a that the text that you have translated, and can you say something about that in 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 this context? Um, so um, right, so the I've translated two texts from this tradition. One is a, a litany, and the litany takes you through the entire um, system of um, Chitta Chittasaka Rupa. In order to go from Putujana to um, uh, Arhat, and it requests, as if these things are external, it requests them all to come through, come to you, and also requests to the Buddha and the teacher. And then the um, the meditation manual tells you what to do with, usually with a uh, sunimitta meditation result, but sometimes they're unimitta meditation result, and how to embody them, uh, including and so. Um, where it looks more like a samatha practice. So, and I think um, Lance Cousins, who's a shared teacher, uh, drew on it in that way. Um, but as I think he also realised, it it also includes the um, in vipassana levels as well. So it, it's very difficult for me to fully understand the system. I think I've come from a a kind of more divided mind body background, so I have to really work. So if anybody can help me with Understanding, particularly how the vipassana levels would work in that way, that would be great. At the samatha levels, we have more occasional hints in the text and through living practice of how we get started. But the vipassana level, we don't get much uh, hints at the beginner stage of each stage, so it's very hard to understand. So I would be very grateful from any help, and if anybody is familiar with a living practice, because I believe there will be other living practices other than the ones I know. And may I answer your question about the living traditions? So, in um, uh, during the Pol Pot period, a lot of the teachers for the Yoga Vajra or b o r a n k a m a t a n tradition were murdered or died. Um, and the so, but just after the Vietnamese restoration of the Sangha in 89 to 91, there was uh, a kind of a mini revival. So, when I first went in the late. Uh, Either late 90s or early 2000s, there were still more practices going on. But at the same time, vipassana had become very popular, and um, and so that spread more. And it's very public and very advertised, and you can do it in large numbers, and it's you can drop in and out, and it's easier, it's cheaper. 
because actually this, requires, this practice requires a lot of offerings. You have to commit to the full wasa practice. And, so, and also, they don't advertise. You have to be brought to it through your own um, vip, kama vipaka, really. So, so it, as far as I know, there are three temples and possibly a few more branches living, but they don't do as rigorous a practice as we know existed before. On the other hand, our um, friend, um, uh, Renbul Silva Nutna, his father was a monk before um, that period and apparently is reordained and is trying to revive some of the... So there are some um, actual physical rites using the Kulen Mountain Caves, um, that, but I don't know how that revival has gone and I haven't spoken to him about it yet, but that's why. So there might be some people who are older who still remember who might try and revive it. Uh, I don't think there's any revival in Laos, but we have lots of manuscripts showing it was present there. In Thailand, um, there's a temple at Ayutthaya still, and there's the temple in uh, what Raja Sitaram and Pibun Chumpon Paisan and Andrew Skilton have written about those Thai traditions and, of course, the modernized Dhammakaya tradition, where we still don't know, unless we've done it, we don't know much about the higher level practices and how similar or reformed they are. Hello, uh, my name is Saw Yimun. I'm an MA student here, and I'm in my second year, already started writing my thesis. And my question is uh, either to uh, Venerable Rector Sierra or my teacher, uh, Dr. P. <laughs> uh, regarding this, uh, the main theme of this international conference and revealing the metrics, um, I can relate the Patana and the Abhidhamma meditation, but why do you particularly choose Bowinga uh, while there are other significant you know, elements in the thought process? Thank you. Uh, we, we, I, we, 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 I dedicate, we dedicate to Professor K. Crosby. Yes. <laughs> I confess that I think I was representing a certain contingent that always gets confused when the bavanga comes up. So I thought, if we're doing some unraveling, could we please unravel the bavanga? And I knew that this room would have extraordinary expertise to help me understand. Is that and, and sure enough, it is one of the topics that kept, we kept coming back to. Um, but I don't know. Um, and also, um, there's a link, specific links to the Batana and Bawanga. Bawanga is uh, the, f the first occurrence of uh, Bawanga, the word Bawanga, occurs in the Batana. So, Witaka, um, Witaka, uh, Tika. Uh, so, so, that is the link. Um, and then, if you look at the whole in terms of the themes, you have the matrix, Matika and then the Patana, and then the Bawanga, Pacific Links, and then to round it up, uh, the whole thing in terms of thinking about it, you have the practice, which is uh, Abhidhamma meditation. So th there's a continuous theme throughout. Okay. I think um, <coughs> for me, um, I, don't, I don't really mind if you get any answer from this uh, conference, but I um, would rather that the exercise that we have here for the last two days triggers you to think of something. Uh, for example, now you have a question, why Bawanga is part of this theme? And what is its place in the whole chitta, uh, in the whole mind system, if you like? Um, and, and, and are all the chitta seekers active? And and then, well, what about where is, where is Bawanga there? So Bawanga is um, a very important um, the part of the the, the, the mind function, the, the mental function. Um, I don't think uh, we know enough un unless you know we expand. Um, um, how, how how should I say? In in terms of in terms of neurology, unless you know we eradicated some of the the negative 
uh, pathway and and develop some positive one in Abhidhamma unless we expand uh, a lot of kusla and go beyond that. I, sometimes people say, okay, Bhavanga is his Abhyagata. That's very simple. That doesn't give us anything. Okay. So, um, what I'd like to encourage you is that, okay, uh, to ask more questions rather than taking the answer from this conference. Good afternoon, Brinavirus and all the scholars. I am Brinavirus Panyati Kalangara from Tamawuniya University, Yangon. And I have a question for Uriwata Saro. And Saro mentioned in the presentation, the Bawanga consciousness also know the specific objects. And my question is, what makes the known passion at the moment or inside knowledge and what made the moment of Bawanga, what made the knowing function at the moment of Bawanga and can you explain more about what is the difference between these two knowing function? Because they, they, there are some function of Bawanga, Ahituga and Duhituga not associated with the knowledge. So can you explain more about the difference? So as I have shared with all the venerable and all the Dharma brothers and sisters, only three-rooted person can attain absorption, concentration, and can attain path and fruition knowledge. So the purpose of practicing meditation is to know and to see the four noble truths. The first noble truth, as I have shared with all the Dharma brothers and sisters, Sankete na Panchu Parane Kanda Dukkha. Briefly to say, five clinging aggregates are called suffering, Dukkha. It is a. If we want to know the noble truth of suffering, we need to know and see five aggregates or five clinging aggregates or ultimate mentality and materiality. So according to Visuddhi Magga and according to Buddha's teaching, in the Pancha Vokara Bhumi, in the realm where there are five aggregates, Mentality arises based on materiality. So to be able to discern ultimate mentality, which arises in a form of cognitive process interrupted by Bhavanga Chaita. So we first know and see ultimate materiality. Why? Seeing consciousness arises based on eye sensitivity. So in the eye dog cognitive process, there are 14 mind movements, except eye consciousness, the 13 mind movements, the rest 13 mind movements arises based on heart-based materiality. So without knowing and seeing the ultimate materiality, which are the base of the mentality, impossible to know and see the cognitive processes. For the beginners, those who know and see the ultimate mentality after knowing and seeing the ultimate materiality. So at that time, they can see the bhavanga, interruption of the bhavanga after eye cognitive process or ear door cognitive process. So easy, simply to put, after five door cognitive process, bhavanga interrupts. They can see the interruption of bhavanga, but they can't understand how many mentality arises in the Bawanga mind movement at that time? They can just see the Bawanga interruption. As I have shared with all of you, what the meditator has reported me, as I have told them to distinguish between the mind movements and Bawanga consciousness. They see, when the Bawanga interrupts, they see the brightness. 
So after they see the cognitive process, so let me share a little bit more about when meditators are going to practice meditation, as they have attained absorption concentration, they can start discerning ultimate mentality of the absorption concentration first, such as first jhana. So in the first jhana, so there are jhana cognitive process, such as mind or cognitive process, and then pre-kama, <coughs> preliminary, ubachara, anuloma, gudrabhu, and then many javana mind movements follow. They can see clearly. What do they report? I told them. How do you see such very quick mind movements? And they reported me. One day I see in this way. One tit is one mind movement. Very quick. So they see mental process because of the support of concentration and because of support of realizing of the ultimate materiality and then they can see the mental process. Endlessly, it is arising and perishing. Very, very <coughs> rapidly, they are arising and perishing. It's only when it becomes weak, I let them focus on the Patibhanga Nimita, which is the object of absorption concentration. When they have entered the first jhana, I let them descend <coughs> the mental process in their bawanga, and they see very rapidly. Let them experience this first. Only after that, they need to break down the compact nets. So compact nets, if they see the cognitive process, they see many mind movements which are rising and perishing rapidly all the time. So they have, broke, they have broken down the compact nets of continuity, sandatikana. And then they need to break down the compactness of group, samuhakana. So what all have discussed about dimension. So if you want to say dimension also, okay. After that, you need to break down the compactness of function. So every chaita, every associated mental factor, chaita sika, they have their own function. So if you don't break down the, the competence of the continuity, so you will see just your feeling. You cannot see the impermanence nature. Only when you see mental process, which are rapidly arising and perishing, what is explained in the commentary, millions in a finger snap. snap. So it is so quick. Only at that time, you see, oh, they are really impermanence. But you stay, hold the view. You stay, hold the wrong view. Oh, there is my moment. Actually, there is no my moment. What is my moment? Just a group of Cheta and Chetasika. So you need to discern Cheta and Chetasika in every my moment. So, is it possible? In the Anubhada Sutta, the Buddha has praised the quality of the Venerable Sariputra. Venerable Sariputra could descend consciousness and associated mental factors one by one. And then commentary explain what is the reason. Vodhāramanan prekītātāya because Venerable Sariputra could descend optic and base. What is the optic? So for about the color line, so Rupa Ramana is an object. So object is sense objects. That's why it impinges to two doors. As I've shared with all the Dharma friends, Ekikan, Aramana, Dwisu, Dwisu, Dwarisu, Abata, Magichati. One sense object impinges to two doors. Because of this reason, Venerable Sariputra could discern each of the mental factors. That's why I could teach my disciples, those who have developed concentration, those who have discerned the ultimate materiality, ultimate materiality, 
both internally and externally. That's why they are ready to descend the ultimate mentality which are rising and perishing in the form of cognitive process. So what, I, what I'm sharing with all, of, all the Dharma friends, Bawanga can be penetrated, can be realized when they see the cognitive process because it interrupts. At that time, they could not, they could not discern the, they could not discern the consciousness and associated mental factors of the Bawanga Chaita. They need to proceed to practice, to know and to see second noble truth. If they know and see the ultimate mentality and materiality, they know and they see the first noble truth. So, the first noble truth is a noble truth of suffering. As a humans, when did the suffering start? When did this suffering start? Suffering starts at the beginning of this life in the mother womb. The beginning stage in the mother womb, it is the beginning of arising of ultimate mentality and materiality. This is the beginning point of the suffering in this very life. So to know and to see the second noble truth. So we need to discern our past life. So the cause of suffering arises, arose at the near death moment of previous past life. So only when they know the, and they, they, they see the near death object, they could discern the Chaita and Chaitasika of the Bawanga. Why? The near death object and the Bawanga object, they are the same. At that time, they come to know how many mentality. For example, for human rebirth, associated with conscious, so if they could develop absorption concentration, for sure they are three-rooted person. They are rebirth linking consciousness associated with wisdom. So without pity and with pity, only this is a concern. So at that time, they can discern what are the Chaita and Chaitasika of the Bawanga. So those who are smiling, with smiling face, they are practicing, they are associated with pity. So those who are practicing, with no, no, no smiling face, as if they are not practicing. Okay? Their face is serious, not, no smiling. So generally to say without pity. So it will be 33 because associated with wisdom at, in the rebirth linking consciousness. So only at that time they can distinguish it. So the another part is what my question, another part is, what made the knowing function at the moment of Bawanga? Knowing yes, Fanny. Because the Bawanga consciousness also know the, the specific objects, gamma, yeah. gamma nimeda or gati nimeda, yeah. something. So, so as I have told the teachings of the Buddha, yes. Bawanga takes the same object of the near that object. Yes. So in the Bawanga, they see that near that object. Yes, at the at the knowing. So what makes me the panya or or the the consciousness actually, itself, or what makes but this that is, knowing consciousness? This is the resultant my moment. That's why it is not actively walking, but it has its object. Only what we want, what we need to know is it is not present object taken by our self. Yes. but the object of the past. That's why there is an object. There is a consciousness that knowing the object. There is a Chetasika which are walking together to know that past object. It is not actively walking. It is not by our action. It is just a resultant. So, so you mean the consciousness itself make the knowing function at that yeah, moment? Because that my movement, Bawanga my movement, knows past object. It itself knows. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, 
Um, I think we are running out of time. Um, so for um, we will take a short break. Um, hum, I would just um, yes, we, we we will come back at uh, ten past three. Um, so we will take short break, and then um, the final session, um, the audience. Uh, you will have to also do some work as well. So because we have um, come up with uh, various topics that mm, we thought it, it would actually answer your some of the uh, questions that you, were ha you have. So um, what we will do is we will get into groups. Um, that, what that means is please come back and then uh, you might just have to... Uh, turn the chair around and then get into groups and then we have allocated uh, facilitators. Um, there are seven um, topics that we uh, think it would be good to discuss. Okay, so when you come back, uh, please pick the topic of your interest. So how to make Abhidhamma accessible is going to be facilitated by Oliver. Oliver, could you wave your hand? Thank you. Um, Buddhism and maths, we hope, will be facilitated by Pie and by uh, Tanwin, if you don't mind. Um, then Bhavanga, we thought would be, um, yes, people will be holding the topic. Show the. Um, so Bhavanga will be uh, facilitated, uh, not doing, um, Bhavanga is facilitated by, can you remember, um, it was. Uh, Professor Ulamie. Um, yeah. Uh, where is he? Is he here? Yeah, here. Oh, right. oh yes, of course, sorry. Um, great. And then um, variety of meditation, um, which is going to be facilitated by uh, Venbo Vijitta Bipala and um, Dr. Uh, Dor Yujani Nyani, if that's okay. Um, and then how Patana and Abhidhamma can contribute to society will be um, facilitated by... Um, Keith Munnings and um, Salido Panya Terry. Uh, yeah. um, and then the final one, um, ethnographic studies of uh, Abhidhamma, um, facilitated by um, Dr. Devinder and uh, Andrew Dade, yeah. if that is OK. <laughs> OK, great. Um, so, um, so we take a break? Yes. So we take a break now until 3.10. Um, please return and find the facilitator of your choice. Thank you. Thank you.